This is gonna be the best day ever. This is gonna be the best day ever. Wake up, top of the morning. The bacon is crispy, the coffee is pouring. My meditation is peeling an orange. The bank says I'm already scoring. I got a parking spot right outside. Step into my brand new ride. All we ever get is green lights and blue skies. This is gonna be the best day ever. You got me looking so fresh. I can't get no better. Baby, I'm a T-Rex. Ready to rumble, ready to flex. I'm the king of the jungle. Right, now that we've got the glamour shots out of the way, let's get down to business. I've got one day to get my head around the Ducati Multistrada S. This is a complex, top of the range bike with a heap of smarts and a price point to match. There's a stack of reviews done on this bike, but I haven't seen one that closely examines its dirt credentials. So I'm going to spend the day on the dirt with this bike, and to get the best out of it I've enlisted the help of Nick Selleck from Ducati. Nick and I go back a long way, and in his new gig, he's promoting the Ducati brand. And with the imminent arrival of the Ducati Desert X, he's got his hands full. Nick is a skilled and knowledgeable rider, and a great communicator and a lot of fun. We start the day setting up the bike for my weight and riding style. Nick Selleck from Ducati. Mate, great to be here today. Stunning day. Thanks for turning it on, Dave. Oh, I know. We're lucky. Now, we're heading out to those hills out there. Cool. These ones? Yep. Can we're going to those? Yep. We're going to do good. the length of that. So as, as long as you can see on the horizon, that's what we're doing. Awesome. Now, Nick, I, you know, you've given me the bike a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. and I took it out in the dirt yesterday, and there's some things I need to know, and there's a little bit of adjustment we need to, to do as well. There, so. is, there is a lot to these bikes, getting them dialed into suit with so many electronics and adjustments to it. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's so many tests on this bike that they've taken it on the road. Today, we're just going to live on the dirt for the day. And uh, to do that, we've got to get the suspension right for the yep. dirt for me. Yep. And we've got to fix that uh, rear brake that's just a little bit low. Yeah, that's always that's one of my big things. Getting that rear brake lever set right um, is so important when you're riding off road to have good control over that rear brake, so we can get that dialed in. And yeah, the electronics, there's heaps of adjustability with that. So depending on your riding style, uh, we can get that all sorted. Beauty. Let's get into it. Cool. Nick, when I'm when I'm standing, mm -hmm. the rear brake is way too low, and I uh, for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm the same. So. If you get this <clears throat> down in the um, kind of the lowest position, if you like, it ends up being pretty good off-road. I'd probably still prefer it um, a fraction higher, maybe about another 5, 10 mil higher, but we will get it there. Yeah, I noticed yours, and yours is a lot better for me. Yeah, yeah I, so the other thing <clears throat> I've put on mine is the, the wider enduro foot peaks. Yes. So I find that really, really helps. I mean, even though these are good serrated steel sort of pegs. Um, yeah, they're too narrow for me. Too narrow for off-road. So, um, yeah, if you ride my bike later, you'll feel the difference between them. And yeah. So it definitely helps. Yeah, we'll have a look at that because it was interesting. When I was riding it yesterday, I thought the length of them was spot on. Yeah. The, the length is fine. Yep. Uh, but I'm always a whinger for pegs. Yeah. Um, I mean, good thing, like it's got a folding tip on the lever and all that sort of thing, but um, yeah. you know, where it is set there now, the highest position, we're probably still about five mil below kind of horizontal, and I always look at that as my go to starting place. Um, yeah. You know, having them horizontal, and if anything, I like to run mine about 10 mil above horizontal. Yeah, yeah. Um, See, so here you go with that, that's definitely going to be better. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Now, while we're at it, I'll just have a little peek at these pegs. Oh, yes, 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 yes. More the size you want. Yes, that's the size of peg I want. See? So they're, they're from Ducati, just, yeah. yeah. Yep, they're off the 1260 Enduro. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, funnily enough, they don't actually list them as an accessory for the V4. Wow, but they fit. Same. So yeah. the one thing I do want, like on the 1260 Enduro, they had a, um, a reversible kind of brake lever tip, if you like. Oh, right, to lift it. Yeah, adjust the height. Yeah. And I bought one to try and fit on there, and it all fits apart from the little... Um, brake actuator thing down the bottom, oh. the brake light switch actuator. So I might try and modify that one, but you know, that's part of the thing. I want to give feedback to Italy and hopefully they'll yeah. develop another brake lever for it um, yeah. um, to suit the off-road riding Be a little bit. Because more. it's it's really like the standing position on the bike is outstanding. Yeah. Really nice and narrow between yep. your legs, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, considering there's a V4 motor in there, it's amazing how narrow it is. Yeah. And you can get your legs straight down to the ground nicely. You know, the, the handlebar position, tank and everything's in a good place. No, it's it's perfect. I, I love how the like the handlebar position is slightly forward, so when you're sitting, it pulls you slightly forward. Yeah. But when you're standing, it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's spot on. Yeah. 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 The actual ergos are spot on for, for dirt. That's one thing, I'm always really critical with a bike. If it feels good between your knees, yeah. you can be comfortable on the bike, you can throw it around, yeah. but if it's a bit awkward and you've got bits that catch between your legs and, uh, and your feet, yeah. uh, then I always find it difficult to ride them off-road. So. so I did about, I don't know, 50 to 80 kilometres yesterday in the dirt. A okay. couple of things that I didn't know how to do that I'd like to do today. One is I'd like in enduro mode to have the traction control off. Yep. And during the day, I'd like to experiment with that, but I'd just like to start with it off. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the same. I generally prefer having traction control off in the dirt. And the second thing I want to do, I felt the suspension. I looked at the suspension setting, mm -hmm. and it was on medium. It was far too soft for me. I yep. like my bike reasonably hard. Yeah. And um, if we could do that as well. And apart from that, I, everything else on the bike is fine now that we've fixed the the brake lever, a rear brake lever and got that up. So yep. that's all I need really. Okay. So there is the full riding mode. So the first thing we want to do is at the moment we've got it in urban mode. So yep. we're going to change that uh, by hitting the mode button then toggling up to enduro. So we'll select that as our riding mode for today. Now you can see straight away we've got engine power is set to low, which is around about 100 horsepower output. So down from the 170. Uh, and it's also a smooth throttle response. I love too. that. I'm happy yeah. with that. 100 throttle response power. is great. Good. Um, so the traction control setting at, at the moment is level two. So we'll dial that back to zero or yep. off. Yep. Uh, and then we've got ABS on one, which means we can lock up the back wheel, but we've still got ABS active on yep. the front. front. Yep. Ducati wheelie controls off. So this is our suspension damping here. So at the moment, you're right in the middle there on medium. So we can yep. dial that up towards hard or harder. Yep. And preload you've got set to auto. That... Um, we can experiment with that a little bit today, and you can do that on the fly. So I'd be interested to get your feedback there, Dave, whether you try perhaps uh, one rider with luggage. That's generally the where I, I run yep. it, but let's yeah. have a play around with that, and quick shift we're definitely going to leave on. Well, I'm a bit bulkier than you, so I'll probably be two riders with luggage. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll select enduro mode now, and then to modify those settings. So it's picked up enduro mode. Yeah. To modify the settings now, we'll go up in this uh, top menu here. Here with using the joystick and we'll get to setting menu select that one go into riding modes go into enduro and this is the one we're going to customize now right engines good yeah so you said you're happy with the engine yeah, so low fine. lower or reduce power and smooth throttle response happy days for off-road so traction control we're going to turn that one right down to off, off. yep and then if we hit the the middle of the joystick we've now got that off so then the other one we'll play with, so ABS will leave, wheelie controls off, that's good, quick shifts on. So we'll go into suspension, go to the front first of all, and we're in medium at the moment. So yep. let's dial it up, maybe... Well, we can try hardest and I can always come yeah. back. Okay, so give that a go. You'll definitely notice the difference. It's going to be obviously harsher on sort of the small ripply sort of bumps. Um, and what i found, I actually tend to run mine hard at the front and hardest at the rear. I, I kind of have... Well, let's do your setting. All right. So because you go, know it. Yep. We'll go hardest at the rear yep. and we'll go back to the front suspension. We'll just dial that back one notch. 
seller at hard there, so we've still got that little bit of give in the front and we can feel what's happening under the tyres. And then, uh, as I said, with the preload, you can adjust that on the fly. Uh, as I said, you know, maybe try doing, you know, do yours rider first. and passenger, give yep. that a try. Yep. Um, so you can see we've basically got 20 levels there, um, wow. actually more than that with the preload. So we wow. can dial right up to 24. So wow. if we run that at around 20, you can see you've still got a bit, bit of capacity there. Um, yep. So that's just going to set our ride height a little bit higher to resist bottoming over you know, erosion bumps or whatever. Yeah. Um, so let's give those settings a try. Yeah. And, and any time you press the mode button on the fly, if you're going to swap between the different modes while you're riding, you get a kind of checklist, if you like, of where you've got things set there. So it's always yeah, a good so, reminder. So when you're flipping between modes now, yep. all the other modes are the same, um, what they were. I've yep. modified Enduro. Now that locks in there now permanently. That's right. So it doesn't yep. matter whether you turn the bike off at the kill switch or, so or the anything. ignition. Oh, it that's retains good. whatever customizations you've done. Yes. And then you can switch between those riding modes. Oh, that's brilliant which is really good yeah it's a good setup excellent well let's get out there my friend cool. I might sound like an old hillbilly but I've ridden this forest for 50 years and I know it very well I've got some specific places in mind to test this bike's dirt credentials I have a feeling most riders wouldn't take their super tours in some of these places and if they did they'd probably do it at an easier pace so after that speech, it's a little embarrassing to find myself stuck in a rut five minutes into the ride. Yeah. So come back a little bit there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I just caught it and went, no! As you ride off into the sunset. Yeah, I got a good rock ledge there. You got it? Yep. Yeah, now we're out. That was funny. Look at it, see? It is a deep one. That just went. Just, yeah, it collapsed under you, didn't it? <laughs> I went, no! <laughs> it just... <laughs> it's one of those things, you don't want to look at it. No. So I've got the bike much better dialed in for me now, and this is a good test going up here. Like it's gravelly and rocky and there's rock ledges and all sorts of things. He can lift the bike now. Rocks taking people off line. <laughs> taking me off line there. Oh shit. Oh. Nick, the Waddingham Nemesis. Now last, yesterday afternoon, I didn't know how to get traction control off and I went to the left. Yeah, right. And you can see that little hole dug there. I can. And I thought, oh, Nick, I can't leave this up here tonight. <laughs> I will not be impressed. <laughs> but so, you made it out. You're here. I made it out and I'm just, I've been in some of these when the four-wheel drives go through. Yeah. And it looks pretty innocuous. Yep. And, mate, that can go straight over the front wheel. Bottomless. Yeah, so going. Uh, what, what do you suggest? I, I was thinking of going to the right there somewhere. Yeah, well, I, I'd sort of say the yeah, just slightly left of full right. There's that kind of shallowest looking bit. Dip. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who knows? All right. I'll. I'll be the right. Good luck. It's nice knowing you. Tip tally ho. Ah. Oh, it had it had soggy sand at the end. There goes Nick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we made it! Holes for me! Yeah, I know! <laughs> Nick's advice on how to set up the bike has been invaluable. 
free from traction control, I can now use the engine's power to lift the front wheel over obstacles. And slow speed slides are useful to set the bike up for the next challenge. Suspension has been dramatically improved in this slow speed stuff. You're going to have that in your rear vision mirror. I had a full lock, opposite lock, and I said no. <laughs> in the slow stuff, I found the Multistrada agile and responsive for its genre of super tourer. The standing position was perfect for my height, and the bike felt balanced and comfortable going slow. Yes, the engine has 170 horsepower, and currently I've got it pegged at 100. But right now, we're using the rev range between about 1800 and 3200 RPM. I can subtly feed the power to the rear wheel in controlled measured doses. Say, enough to lift the front wheel, but not break out in a huge power slide. And when I take it real slow, with four cylinders firing, it's very unlikely it's going to stall. I feel the engine is working with me and doing what I'm asking it to do, and nothing more. It's a great power delivery for the slow stuff, and for adventurers, that's more important than going fast. I'm noticing the low seat height when it all gets too much and I have to paddle. I can plant both feet flat on the ground because, as we all know, once a Super Tourer gets a lean on it, you're going over. The front Brembo brake has already made its presence felt in the slow stuff. There's a subtlety to its activation that is perfect for the dirt. The suspension settings that Nick have dialed in for me are working really well in the slow stuff. Activation take up and control of the clutch is great for the slow stuff. However, despite Nick raising the rear brake pedal, it's just not high enough for me. And I found myself having to take my foot off the foot peg to apply the rear brake, or to lean forward awkwardly. Either solution does not give me the feel of the activation of the rear brake while standing that I would like. I'll admit I had considered taping a rock to the top of the rear brake lever, but I'm not sure Nick would appreciate that, so I gave it a miss. It's a little frustrating because I know a $40 part that raises brake pedal height around 15 millimeters would solve this problem. Out on the more open stuff and we immediately come across some deep sand. Despite standing on the pegs and leaning back and feeding the power, the bike felt twitchy. Oh, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> Certainly keeps you on your toes. With that 19 inch wheel and a centre of gravity on the high side and its road bike leanings in terms of steering head angle, it's an observation I frequently find on road oriented super tourers. She was a good companion, eyes like the Grand Canyon. She was an American beauty. We've spent the morning taking this bike on tracks that many would avoid on a Super Tourer. I leave the slow and trickier stuff with a positive view as to how the Multistrada acquitted itself. Rocks, slippery mud, deep ruts, sharp edge potholes. We've done the lot and the bike has demonstrated its versatility with handling characteristics and an engine dynamic that will get you through those more challenging tracks. And it's fine to say, well, I'd never ride anything like that, but we all know adventure riders who've started down a lovely looking trail only for it to turn to crap. And it's comforting knowing that within reason, this bike can do the tougher stuff. Time to take the bike on what I think is its happy place the picturesque Murray's Run Road, a combination of hard-packed smooth gravel with short sections of tar. 
Close to 90% of riding around Australia mirrors the conditions of this road. The Multistrada is at home. This bike is a comfortable mile muncher. I effortlessly flick up the windshield for full protection out of the wind. I spend most of my time standing, but when I do sit down, the rear brake is perfectly located for activation. The handlebars pull the rider slightly forward. Time to refuel the bikes and the riders. Yeah, moving from the dirt to car really highlights the versatility of this bike. Yeah, I'm not going to swap it in any other different mode. I've got it enduro mode and basically it's going to stay there all day. Sun, she fired shots from a loaded gun. Wish I had held her longer. Wish I had held her longer. She was a good companion, eyes like the Grand Canyon. She was. An American beer. So, Nick, how much do we get on a tank? Oh, highly variable. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, between three and four hundred kilometres. So, you know, it um, typically I'll see around six litres per hundred kilometre um, yep. economy. But yeah. yeah, it really does vary. I mean, I've, I've had it down into the low fours. Um, <laughs> so it just depends on how... That's a very economical ride, I'd suggest. <laughs> oh, please. Not so much of this. Not, yeah, less of that. <laughs> so what's the tank size on it? 22 litres. So 22 litres, uh, as I said, you can, you can get over the 400 kilometres, but uh, you need to be judicious with your throw use. <laughs> Now I noticed another thing on your bike that I like, although I must admit I don't mind my screen, you've got a smaller screen. Yeah, so that's actually in the high position at the moment if we drop it down. Oh wow, it's really low isn't it? Yeah, much more compact, so um, if you notice the difference, like it, it loses some width here on the side and probably, you know, a good 40, 50 mil of height out of the top. Um, yeah. Lower part of it's much the same. but. I find it um, like that's much better riding off road. You can get over the front more aggressively, and then when you get on the highway, I find that's still enough height for yeah. me to be comfortable. I'm not super tall, yep. 178 centimeters. So same that's height as me. Height for me. Yeah, um, you're the same height as me. Mm. I'm um, not the same width though. I think I'm a bit slightly wider. <laughs> <laughs> 32 medium <laughs> uh, yeah no 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 um, yeah so I'm quite liking that uh, bigger screen I mean it, it uh, you know I, I before this ride I had to do 200 k's of freeway and yeah, uh, yeah that's a, a better screen if you're doing that sort of stuff yeah I absolutely. haven't in the dirt today I mean I haven't been going that hard but I, I haven't found that to be in the way no it's only if you get those you know really extreme angles Gulls. trying to come up a um, yeah a little step up, or big step up, I should say, and you're really getting extreme angles going. But yeah, for all the riding we've done today, not right. which may happen in Yanga. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I might. Yeah, Hopefully I might a few be step ups there. Yeah, I might be uh, changing my mind on this, but at the moment it's just right. Yeah. Fed and fueled in this next section, the pace ramps up to fast flowing dirt tracks with erosion mounds, jumps, and G outs. Time to see how the Multistrata responds to a consistently high trail speed in a constantly changing and challenging environment. We'll be riding at speed for tens of kilometres, and if there's any weaknesses in the handling of the bike, we're going to find them. And of course, along the way, we're going to have a heap of fun. I think this trail is starting to get a few more erosion mounds, a few more G-outs. I'm finding the suspension, the preload's a bit light for me. It's yep. on uh, rider plus weight. Yes. So I've just pressed the suspension mode here. Yep. 
and I just bring this up to say rider plus passenger and baggage. Yep. Select that, and that's now in. So you can hear that whirring away now, it's adding a bit of preload to the rear shock spring. Bring the yes. ride height up a bit higher. Yeah, yeah, I felt it going up. Yeah, let's see how, how that is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just pushing along a little bit harder. Anything else you recommend? Well, so we played with the suspension before uh, yeah. to get you adjusting the damping as well. So we've got that on. Hard. We have hard on the front and I think hardest on the rear. Yeah. Uh, so that's the other variable we can change. But I think um, that's probably good. I'm not worried about the front. The front is not bottoming. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, it's uh, the back is just a little bit. It was just falling through the stroke a bit. Yeah. So through the G outs. Yeah. Yeah. So you get that a try, Yeah, with a bit more preload. See how it feels. Yeah. Okay. Happy days. All right. Let's get going. I mean, that's the great thing. You can dial the bike in. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yep, no, I'm happy with that. And? That, that has solved it for me. Okay. No, that's fine. I, I, to be frank with you, on a big bike like this, I don't want to go much faster than that. Yeah. You know, we're, we're leaving Mother Earth regularly. <laughs> we're wheel standing over the yep. erosion mounds. Yep. That's a, for me, for my uh, rider skill level, yep. Um, no, that's that's quite good. We're certainly not slow. No, I mean we've been going through at a good pace there, and yeah. I did the same thing when we left that last spot. I cranked the suspension up, same settings with yeah. uh, two rider and passenger essentially, so maximising that ride height. And you could feel it as soon as you head off. You can feel it definitely. The bike's firmer and kind of more lively in the back end, almost yes. like it's. Um, yeah. No, I, I'm happy with it. Yeah. It's certainly not falling through the stroke. It's certainly. Uh, not gone beyond its design limits. No. I'm feeling comfortable. Um, you know, we're probably, we're not getting huge here, but I'd say we're probably a foot off the ground sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, the neat thing is, and when we get back on the bitumen here, um, you can, you know, select up, say, touring mode. Yeah, you're just in it. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to change your damping back, and then you can also change your preload on the fly, so there's no need to stop and change all these settings that we just yep. changed. Um, they're saved in there now in our modes and we can swap them. Between. So the question is, so um, so we go back, we go, we get off here and we get on the tar and we go on the touring mode. Yep. And then we come to some dirt yep. and we're in the enduro mode. Does that take our, our in this enduro setting for the preload, does that take the whole lot? Yeah, correct. So if we've gone through... Um, and we've selected everything in enduro mode, every time we go back, that selection's what you get. That's saved in there. Well, you've got to be happy with that. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's I, good. I like Ducati's approach to that. I think. It's yeah, good. yeah. You don't want to. I don't want to fiddle too much. Like when I'm on the truck, I don't mind fiddling at the beginning of the day. Yep. Get it all set up. Yep. And um, to be frank, once that's set up, I think it's getting very close to what I want. Yeah. The only thing I haven't changed is horsepower settings. I know. I was just going to mention that, Dave. I think it's time we take the L plates off. Yeah, take the L plates off. Get me 170. Horsepower. Yeah, I think you. I think you're man enough to handle. Yeah, it. yeah, I, I, I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the that's the beauty of it. Like some of the uh, models I've I've ridden lately is okay. You get off, you get on back one. You know, you get off the road and you get yeah. back on the dirt and then road dirt, road dirt. And in the end, you you jeopardise your safety because you go, I couldn't be bothered, just and you just it. leave it in yeah. dirt. Yeah. And that's that's not healthy for you. You know, you, you're tired at the end of the day. Yep. You're on a tired road. It's been raining a little bit. You come around a corner and you're not concentrating. Yep. And you, you, you've you made yourself vulnerable when all the safety features are not working. Yeah, yeah you've either turned off rear ABS or you've got no traction control on. And like you say, when you're tired at the end of the day, that's when mistakes can happen. And yeah, well... It is, you know, look, some brands, they'll isolate uh, traction and ABS and things. You've got to go push so many buttons to get to things, whereas Ducati, it's pretty much... Boom, one boom. Button, and you're there. Throttle, all right, so now I've got a man up. So it's in the setting menu. Yep. So, riding mode, yep. go across to enduro, and it's the first engine. Yep. So oh, here we go. So, it's at 
What is it at? Oh, it's so, at low. Yeah, so if you go to medium. Give me medium. Medium's good. So what you're getting there is 170 horsepower <laughs> with a smooth throttle response. Oh, that sounds good. I don't, I don't want... And then later, when we get back on the tail, we'll put no, it in we'll... sport mode with dynamic <laughs> throttle and you can feel what a snappy, <laughs> snarly thing it becomes. All right. Do I really need... That? I'm asking the question now before I start. Do those tyres really need... Do, do those tyres, do I really need 170 horsepower in the bush? Well... It's time to find out. Can, can we rephrase that? Right. Do you need it or do you want it? Well, that's the good thing. I mean, the reason you ride bikes is to know you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're into medium, 170 horsepower. Here we go, Nick. Yep. Uh, now I've got to get out. And back home. And that's it. All right, so just checking. So now, this is all set for me now. I've raised the engine, all the other ones are the same. Mm -hmm. And that just tells me quickly, that's what the settings are. Right, yeah. Yep. Okay, just trying to see my GoPro. Got off the L plates on to <laughs> 170 horsepower. And Nick, thank you for the suggestion. I, I'll be frank with you, I thought it might have dominated me, but actually the way the power comes on, it's excellent. It's, it's still controllable, isn't it? Very controllable on that on that medium setting. So the medium setting is the full 170 horsepower. Yep. All it's doing is just slowing your throttle control. Yeah, just smoothing that out. And smoothing I think it out, yeah. For me, having that extra power on tap, of course we're probably not going to use 170 horsepower on track like this, but to me, it helps the, make the bike feel lighter. Yes, Because you've got the more power to kind of balance out the weight, if you like. So it's more as, it allows you to step the back end out when you want to, and it can make the bike feel lighter and more nimble. Yeah, what I, the difference I've noticed straight away is that I can break out the back uh, yep. more consistently. Yep. Um, the other thing I've noticed is if I need to go something or, or lift, yeah. um, I've just got a bit more poke. I don't have to go for the clutch. I just pop and, uh, and go. and. Like there was a lot of time in there. We're, we're literally in the air all the time. Yeah. So, and and it really doesn't change that initial response no. at the bottom ends, so, and that's what you want. You know, it's controllable, but you've got that power on oh. tap when you want to access it. Where I had that little moment this morning, I, I think even in there, I wouldn't have been a problem. No, at all. no, oh. that's right. With 170 horses on tap and the bike suspension set up the best it could be for me. My trail speed went beyond what most riders would be willing to take their multi-stratas. Pushing the bikes to their dirt limits did reveal a harshness to the suspension for high speed compression hits. This is when we reach that magic word, compromise. At the end of the day, this is a road oriented super tourer. And suspension is biased to satisfying most riders who wouldn't dream of taking their bikes on tracks like this at speed. But as evidence today, the fundamentals of the bike, that is its steering, the frame geometry and power delivery, ensured the bike was a surprising dirt performer for a Super Tourer. Yes, I found the dirt limits of the suspension, but shaving 20 kilometers off my speed would bring it back into its comfort zone. At the end of the day, we rode a good 50 kilometers at speed, and at all times I felt the bike had a poise and presence. I felt confident and comfortable on the bike, but those narrow foot pegs were starting to be a pain in my feet. At the end of the day, it had been a heap of fun, and isn't that what we're really chasing? It's got hill hold. I didn't know this, Nick. <laughs> Tell me more how, I didn't see any Button for that. You haven't found this one yet. No. 
So we're in neutral and if you come to a, say a hill like this when you're in an off-road environment or even in the urban environment a set of traffic lights, what you do is a good hard press on either the front brake lever or the rear brake lever yep. and it basically puts a park brake on for you. Wow. So it'll hold the brake pressure on for three minutes yes. and to disengage it you can either do a double pump on the lever or the foot brake yep. or get it in gear ease the clutch out and as you're easing the clutch out that brake pressure is slowly going to release so you can drive out of now you know what i love about this this is i'm just going to move back into the camera because now you've got to get out of this yeah so i'd suggest there's going to be some serious roosting <laughs> so it's it's in neutral clutch is in um, i'm going to fire it up and i'll see how i can get out of here and the good thing is that brake's going to hold me as i start to take up the drive with the clutch so <laughs> Let's see how much roost we do or don't get. I think there's going to be a lot. <laughs> right, eh? Okay, so oh, look at that. We've got a fair whack of money tied up in motorbikes at the moment. I'm good, my feet are dry at the moment Dave. It's Your bash plate is touching the water. That road worker said that other washout got this three metres deep, did he what, say? What did they add? Three or four hundred mils, mils of gravel uh, <laughs> on top to bring the height back up? So, <laughs> I have no idea how deep that is. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to walk at discretion there's no crocodiles around here. So. All right. Shit, if I disappear, are there any crocodiles? No. No. We're safe in New South Wales. They haven't ventured this far south. Whoa. <laughs> Shit. That's <laughs> that's a that. hole. That's a hole there. That's up to yeah. my knee straight away. Straight to the knee death. Jesus. <laughs> you know, Dave, when it gets up to my testicles, that's when I get unhappy. Where's where's the uh, well the other technical expert? So you can tell me now. <laughs> well, I'm standing up, my knees in water. You're going to ask me what the fording depth of the Ducati is. Correct. You don't know, do you? I know what my fording depth <laughs> is. And it stops about here. Yeah, your nutsack. <laughs> Hear the commotion. That's okay, cause we're in motion. I can feel the sway. There's nothing to fear, my friend. Oh no, it's the natural road at all. We've spent almost the entire day on a range of dirt conditions, and there's one more section to go. It's a track where we regularly test adventure bike suspension. This hill climb is littered with sharp edged rocks and ledges that are combined with erosion mounds. It's a place where if you're not careful, a dented rim is on the cards. There's also tons of opportunity to use the full length of the suspension travel. Yeah, the thing about this part of the climb is it's very um, sharp edge rocks and these little G outs that take you into sharp edge rocks and they've got nasty lips on them. Up and over that one. Coming to the end of the ride, it's been a good day. Time to get it out of enduro mode. And I don't mind this touring mode, so that's where I'm gonna go. Nick, thanks for taking us out on the bikes Pleasure. today. It's well, good. we've certainly done the dirt test. There's lots of mud on them. There is. Good Although we did wash a lot of it off. <laughs> True. That's only about half of it, yeah. isn't it? 
<laughs> Mate, that was uh, the Ducati submarine team as we went into that. Uh, that was very funny. And uh, So I'm interested to know what you think. Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a great bike. I see it as um, a good dual sporter, a, a strong dual sporter, yep. um, but it's a little bit more road-oriented than what I prefer. I'm yep. a dirt-oriented adventurer. So generally I sit around the 800 cc mark are a little bit smaller yeah but having said that it's a very versatile bike and you know i really enjoyed riding it i i think for many many people um you know we've demonstrated today that these are a lot more dirt oriented than people think mm. and a lot more dirt capable than people think yeah exactly i mean it's the first time today there's a couple of firsts today the first time i ran over a goanna <laughs> poor fella <laughs> yeah he's alive he's good First time I got air on a Ducati Multistrada, <laughs> and first time I got air beside another guy on in the air on a Ducati, Ducati Multistrada. Good. And um, yeah, no, the bike's handled well, but as always, you know, you've got that uh, compromise mm. to to this is a road oriented adventurer or a road oriented dual sporter or tourer, maybe a more accurate r- word for it. And there are some compromises to get that lovely, yeah. soft and pliable suspension when you're, you know, you're out on the black top, and and then if you push it, yeah, you can up up your preload. But when you're on the adventure side of the of the line and you start pushing it, yep. you start to feel the limitations of the suspension. Yeah. But as I've said to a hundred people, if if you're finding the limitations of your suspension, just slow down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you know, I think you've just always got to keep in context, you know, what the bike's aimed at, what segment of the market yes. it's aimed at. And, uh, you yeah. know, when you think in that light, um, then you yeah. go, happy days, great power, great handling on road, fantastic brakes. Uh, I yeah. love, I mean, there's some, some outstanding features just mm. that are right up there. I, that front brake is the best front brake I've ever had. I just yeah. love the feel of it and the power, but it, there's a subtlety to it. Yeah. And you use two fingers and you go, oh, I understand that. Yeah. The difference, though, with the back brake, I have no doubt that Brembo have the best rear brake in the world. But, you know, for standing, and this bike is beautiful for standing, uh, that uh, foot brake doesn't work for me at all. So just the height of it, you want to get that a bit higher? And you know what? It's probably a $40 extension. I mean, I know some guys just tape a rock. Yeah. (laughs) Let's not do that on a forty thousand dollar motorcycle. Though. Let's not do that. But I'm I'm quite confident there's probably some extension you can get there. Just yeah. I think it needs about I don't know 10, 15 mil. Hundred percent. Yeah. So I found myself uh, with the the foot peg taking my foot off the foot peg to mm-hmm. activate it, mm-hmm. and then I'm losing control. Yep. Rear brake control. Yep. And I'm sure the back brakes are a lot better. So what it stopped me from doing is I have a tendency to back into corners a bit yep. more. Yep, drift in. Uh, and I, I, I didn't have the confidence to do that because I was using bigger muscle groups and it just, just wasn't happening. So it's a little thing and it's probably a $40 part mm. and, and that's fixed. But that's where those ergonomics are so important on a dirt bike you know a yes. motorcycle that you're going to ride off road all those controls need to fall naturally to place and um it, like you said again a compromise then when you're sitting on the bike on the road it's fine yeah uh, but just getting that a more aggressive off-road standing position yeah um, so speaking of controls I, i'd have to say the actuation and all the controls work um beautifully that was yeah. the only one that i had a challenge with yeah. You know, we just spent the last 20 minutes I just spent on your bike. I love those wider pegs. Yeah. Give me a set of those. Yeah, it makes a big difference. But I guess, um, you know, for a road-oriented adventure bike, the standing position on this is ideal. Mm. And, you know, I found myself standing for hours on this today. Yeah. And so all that sorted. It just needs that little thing done. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. I think it's it's incredible when you are standing on the bike and if you think to yourself, this is a V4 or a four-cylinder engine underneath me, it's, you know, it's pretty amazing yeah. how narrow it does feel between the legs. You know, it's funny you say that. Not once did I even think that I had a V4 yeah. between the legs today, yeah. <laughs> which is really, unless I, you know, obviously hit the power. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of controls, one thing I overlooked was the throttle. So you said, come on, come into the big boys club. 
<laughs> get access to 170 horsepower. Yep. And I thought, oh, this is going to dominate me in the dirt. You know, I normally 100's fine for me. I mean, yeah. that's ridiculous a lot. But uh, the throttle control on that medium setting was perfect. Yep. And I'd have to say, and this is why you work for Ducati, <laughs> You said the bike would become lighter and feel lighter and turn lighter, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. And um, It's not that you necessarily need to use that extra 70 horsepower that's there, but it does make the bike more responsive. Yes, and, definitely. Uh, so it's then up to you as a skilled pilot to use it judiciously or wherever you need it. Yeah. If you feel you want a bit more gas, and you can step the back end out and change your angle of attack, and it works. Yeah, no, I... I, I um, and it really highlighted the strength of the engine. I mean, mm. you know, today we've been in some really um, snotty, slippery stuff. Yep. And, you know, the, the between the revs of about 1,800 revs to probably 2.8, just 3 maybe, there's a subtlety to this engine yeah. that's usable. Yeah. And, you know, if I had, you know, that's another feature of the bike that I think is a real strong point, that it, that it, you can do... The slow stuff yep. you can do the difficult stuff and with four cylinders it's very unlikely to stall yeah that's right I, yeah look i'm yet to have that kind of flame out situation in climbing yep. a technical little section so it is very forgiving in that way yeah so fuel economy is an interesting one and a number of the the uh, subscribers said to me you got to check this fuel economy yeah. on this bike yeah now when i do a real world fuel economy that's a combination of blacktop, yep. freeway, yep. and dirt. Yep. Now, today, we've just lived on the dirt. Yeah. So I think the fuel economy is not real world, <laughs> and I'm going to put a flashing amber on it. <laughs> Disclaimer. Because uh, I'm, I got... We, we're going to do people's heads in. Are I've we going to do a comparison here? <laughs> I've got... <laughs> 35 miles to the gallon. <laughs> and I, I think I had about 7 litres per 100. 7.8. 7.8 7 litres yep. per 100 k's, which is... That's my record, by the way. Yeah, that's... that's the highest I've seen. Well, but we were going yeah. at it at a fair rate. And at the end of the day, if you buy a Ducati Multistrada, you're not buying it to go to the shops to pick up the yeah. groceries. Yeah. And you, you, you buy it because you want that experience of, you know feeling alive there's 170 horsepower there for a reason yes <laughs> let's use it yeah <laughs> so um yeah that was an interesting uh interesting thing yeah um tell me what about the cruise control okay uh there's a couple of things i've ridden a number of bikes lately and cruise control actuation has been really fiddly yeah on this bike it's very simple mm. it doesn't take any um concentration away from your focus which should be avoiding cars and yep. trucks yep. Um, activates beautifully and I love the adaptive cruise control and I used it um, all the time mm -hmm. it just saves you you know and gives you space between cars mm -hmm. yeah fantastic yeah it's very hard to fault isn't it they've really got it dialed in nicely it's and... perfect now with this engine dynamic one of the things that I liked about it is its versatility. I mean, you know, I've got into the urban traffic, into the traffic jams. It wasn't a fuss. Then you get on the freeway, it wasn't a fuss. Then you get on the black black top and those uh, twisties, and you start saying, oh, this is good. Yeah. And then you get on the dirt, and it's not a fuss. It can go slow, it can go yeah. fast. So that engine is... Yeah, okay, some people go 170 horsepower, but at the end of the day, that delivery yep. is so versatile. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's, you know, I mentioned earlier, Ducati worked a lot on the user-friendliness of this bike and also the comfort, the riding comfort. Yeah. And, you know, that user-friendliness, by having 170 horsepower there, it just means you've got excess. You know, if you have a passenger or luggage on board, you're not compromised then when you're overtaking no. or pulling up hills or whatever, no. but you don't have to use that power. And it's very happy to poodle along around town at 50 kilometres an hour. Yeah, so let's talk about access to electronics. Mm. And as you know, it was a bit embarrassing. You know, I've had the bike for a couple of days and I could not work it out. But now I understand the Ducati logic. It makes complete sense to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, the business of being able to just to flip through those modes and quickly enter them, 
uh, when you're on the fly, yep. that's good. Yep. But what you do at the beginning of the day, you you sit down and work out, okay, well, this is the sort of riding I'm going to be doing. Yeah. And you just sit there and stationarily do it. But I'd even say there, Dave, uh, you know, you've had just a couple of days on the bike. You know, if a customer has one of these bikes, they're probably going to do that customization perhaps once, yeah. you know, early on in the ownership and go, cool, that's where I'm happy with my settings. And they'll ride yeah. it like that for, you know, forever and eternity. Or maybe they will start to, as they get used to the bike, they'll start to maybe dial things back. And yeah. I think that's another important thing. This bike has so much potential there is more potential to untap with it if you dial yes. back some of those electronics. Um, yeah. Ducati, if anything, have maybe erred on the side of caution a little bit with their electronic settings initially. Yes. So there's more potential to give is, I, I guess, what I'd say for more experienced riders. Yes. And um, now I found that a, a great strength, the accessibility to them. But not only that, there is a huge difference, as you showed me, in terms of the suspension settings, you yeah. know. And today there's been a number of times where we've stopped and you say, all right, Dave, well, what do you think about this? What yeah. do you think about that? And I knew what I wanted. I just didn't yeah. quite know how to get there. To access, yep. And um, that's not Ducati's fault. I mean, I've only had the bike for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just a matter of um, reading up and studying <laughs> this bike. And I'm glad you say that because I honestly do believe this is one bike you need to read the manual for because there is some Easter eggs hidden in there. And unless you read the manual and understand it, they'll remain hidden. And one of the Easter eggs is hill start. Yeah. Which I said to you, well, well it doesn't have hill start, you know. <laughs> and you go, oh, but wait. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah. And we've got a great example of you on that yeah. hill. Mind you, I will complain about that piddling little roost, the first one you did. The <laughs> no, second the first one, one was good. It was the second <laughs> one. That's yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Second one was piddling. Like a teenager. Yeah, third one was, um, yeah, far better, far better. Mm. So when we're looking at, um, you know, that more heavy use of the gas, the fuel capacity on the bike is what? So 22 litres. 22 so litres. So theoretically, we'll get somewhere between 300, 400 kilometres. Yeah. You know, as we've probably noticed, yeah. that's going to vary, like with any bike, any engine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you're going if you're going hard in the bush, you would want to be starting to think about fuel around 270, 280 Yeah, case. probably. Yeah. So just a few weeks ago, I was in the Victorian high country for three days, and I was finding I was getting somewhere around the 300, 350 Ks. Yes. So like, as you say, probably yeah. when you're getting around the 280, you've, you've yeah. got to start thinking, right, oh, what's going to be my next opportunity? Yeah. Well, we... Um, yeah, we had a couple of sessions there where we were certainly on the gas for quite a considerable period of time. Another great design feature I like about the bike is the way the cooling fans push the air out and not onto you. Mm. A number of bikes, even quite late model bikes, um, continue to not think about rider comfort. And yeah. in, in Australia, you would just bake. Exactly. The other thing, though, down here, the winglets yes. on the Panigale and the Street Fighter, they've got massive big wing winglets there to keep the front end on the ground because of the power. These are actually designed for that rider comfort. So exactly like you say, yep. the radiator vents are throwing the warm air out here. Yep. These winglets are scooping up nice cool air to come around past the rider's right. legs and yep. help minimise some of that engine heat. Um, the other thing I mentioned earlier too, they have rear cylinder deactivation. Yes. So when you're sitting stationary at traffic lights or whatever, the rear cylinders will shut off yes. while you're idling, and yeah. then as soon as you engage the clutch, go to take off, the rear cylinders fire back up again, uh, and that's just in the name of trying to minimise that engine heat and the rider comfort levels improve that. Oh, it, it does. I mean, you just notice this mm. like that. Mm. So one other little party trick that uh, Ducati recently added through a software update uh, is what they call the minimum preload setting for the rear shock. So we've got electronically controlled or adjustable suspension there and we can adjust the preload on the shock. But yeah. the other thing we can do is take all that preload out of the shock momentarily to let the rear seat or the you know, rider seat reduce the minimum seat height to help with manoeuvring if you've got to yeah. back it into a, a you know, car park area or even pulling up to a set of traffic yeah. lights. So basically the suspension preload button on left hand switch block, press and hold that for two seconds, the bike's going to drop down to its minimum setting yeah. and then you can either press and hold it to come back up or if you just ride off, as soon yeah. as your ground speed gets above 90 kilometres an hour, it resets to its preset uh, yeah. preload. Well, yeah, that was one strength of the, of the ergos that I really liked 
is okay this bike is a little top heavy mm. but they're really looking after the rider with the seat height yeah. like i could put my both my feet flat on the ground yep and i'm 178 centimeters same yep. height as you actually same height. yep and i could just put my feet flat on the ground and it gave me a confidence and I've got a feeling, so the, the rider seat is adjustable in height, varies about 30 millimetres, so there's yeah. three positions there. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bit of adjustability there with the seat, and then mm. there's accessory high and low seats too, if you want to drop it further. Yeah. Or they do also have a lowered suspension kit now too. But mm. like you say, for, for guys our sort of height, it is really comfortable, um, easy to manage when you can get both feet on the ground comfortably like that. Talk to me about the air filter for the bike. Yeah, so the air filter's up here, mounted up here behind the head stem, basically. Yeah. And the air intake essentially is behind the headlight. Uh, right. There is a couple of little ducts up here, but essentially there's a little rubber boot comes around up in behind the headlight, so it's drawing right. really nice, fresh, clean air yep. right from the front of the bike. There's four screws to remove the um, the filter panel, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and that filter panel will come out from here, from underneath the, the handlebars. So right. serviceability-wise is way better than a lot of bikes. Um, yeah. Very quick and simple to get to and um, yeah it is a paper filter element in there yeah. uh, but I think drawing in nice clean air at the front is yeah. a big part of the equation. Yeah um, pa paper filter elements out west <laughs> don't go too well. A yep. uni filter or some other oil air filter around? Correct so we've spoken to uni filter Australia about developing a foam filter yeah. element for these bikes. Don't have one yet but we no. will have. Yeah yeah no, that's um we've seen a few manufacturers um have some difficulties and challenges with their yeah you know. and look certainly when i went to uh italy last year in december that was one of the big things i kept on yeah you would hammering have home that. to the italian saying we've got to have good air filters we've got to have a good good system for that and yeah. uh and i think they have done a good job with the multi strider as far as the positioning and everything so just adding that you know accessory. we need to give the european designers we used to give them a bottle a of jar? red dust <laughs> That's right. so they understand and then tip it out and yep. realize how fine it is it's um, you know, when I came back from Western Australia, I had like a rouge, yeah. and it took me days to get it out. Your riding gear is never the same again. It's never. <laughs> it's never. Yeah. So um, there is a couple of other things I want to point out for you, Dave. One is yeah. this little what we could call a tech box down here, little glove box. Uh, you can fit a full-size iPhone in there, a smartphone. Um, slots down side. There's also a USB charging port in there, so you can put your phone in. It's nice and safe and dry, and you can power it up. What you can do then by having the phone there, you can connect the phone via Wi-Fi to the bike, and then we can get into Ducati Connect on the dashboard, which gives us access to a few other features. So we can have music or our phone on there, but probably one of the real benefits is it's got onboard navigation. So Sidejig GPS navigation, which means we can get turn directions coming up on the screen, uh, and it works very, very well. So you can see 3.2 kilometers to get back get back home and uh, we can go through there and select a whole bunch of features and um, get navigation on the screen while still having some of the main bike features up the top. Yep. So a little 12 volt power outlet there with the Merit style plug. So yep. you can power up your USB or your heated vest perhaps. So all in all, when you think about Australian dirt riding conditions, I mean, you know, m most most adventurers don't actually go on tracks like we went on today and yeah. certainly not at that speed yeah yeah um and you know for 95 percent of the riding in australia maybe even 98 percent these bikes just eat up those miles comfortably right. effectively and then when you want to go on the the black top or the freeway and have a blast then you you've got that as well yeah. so a okay. great all-rounder Simple little things like that uh, windscreen adjustment. So quick and easy to pop yeah, it up and down. That's you... won the Mad TV Award as the best adjustable. Is it... So simple. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, that's another highlight for the bike. And people go, oh, no, that makes a big difference for me. Yeah. I, I just like it. Just on that, I, I've i got the larger fairing than you. I, I didn't once, I mean, we were pushing pretty hard today. Yeah. I didn't once feel like that was going to strike. Get in the way, yeah. No. Yeah. And I think, you know, look, part of the reason I put this smaller screen on is, is airflow over the body too. You yeah. know, when you're working hard off-road, you yeah. want to try and get as much air over the body to keep you cool. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the reasons I fitted that screen. Um, and, you know, the other reason is, yeah, for that sort of manoeuvrability, so you don't feel like you're going to get necked by no. a screen. But as you said, that standard one, I've never had an issue with that anyway. Now, the 
Ducati gets another award for me for rider safety, and that's the the mirrors yeah. with the warning. Yeah. When you, when you're, someone's in your blind spot, blind that's spot right. alarm. So, so it's basically part of the active cruise system, more or less. There's a radar yeah. at the front, radar at the back, and that's constantly monitoring vehicles that are in front or behind the bike. And any time yeah. there's a vehicle here in your blind spot that little orange LED will light up and stay solid on your mirror just to yeah. sort of get your attention a little bit. And I don't know if you've noticed, if you go to indicate to go into yeah, the yeah, lane, flash, flash, stop, flash, stop, don't do it. To really get your attention, so there's, that's brilliant safety. There's been more than a few bike riders come off in those circumstances. Yeah. Well, Nick, thanks so much for the opportunity to ride this. We've had a great day. Um, we've certainly proved that the Duke, and we don't need to talk. We just show the vision with a bit of music, and people are saying, "Oh no, that's dirt." It that's, works off road. That works off road. <laughs> so, mate, thanks so much for your time. That Thank you, great. Dave. Cheers. That was great. Good. I got a parking spot right outside. Step into my brand new ride. All we ever get is green lights and blue skies. This is gonna be the best. So what's the call, Dave? <laughs> Mad TV, up to our knees in it. <laughs> as long as you're not up to your neck in it. I think the only thing we've got to check, the bottom seems reasonable, so we'll yeah. have a look at what knee length means on a Ducati. But there is a massive Yeah, there's a hole right there, isn't off it? Here. Just find it again for us. Yeah. There you go, step up. So it's just, it's just where you are, just goes thunk, thunk. <laughs> oh shit, no, nah, still gone there. It's a drop off. So it just drops off the road into oh. the. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> so what you're saying is, I'm just about to drop into the hole. You're just about to drop into a decent hole. Hang on. 